Now, a new documentary set to air on Channel 4 tonight claims that same-sex relationships in the animal kingdom are more common than you might think. Well, our next guest knows all about that. Uh, Christine King is the owner of two female pugs, Pugly and Nelly, who says they are more than just friends. And they are here now alongside our vet, Dr Scott Miller. Welcome Good to morning. all of you. Welcome, you. girls. Um, so you're the co-owner of White House Kennels in Western Supermen. You look after cats and dogs, but you also rehome abandoned dogs. So, oh, she's fallen asleep. How did um, <laughs> How did these two come to be with you? OK. Um, well, Pugly, um, unfortunately, her family were being evicted. Uh, it was a really sad set of circumstances. And uh, they couldn't keep her any longer, so right. we took her on. Uh, so she's four. We took her on as a, as a puppy, um, she, but she hadn't been socialised very well. And then little Nelly was a runt of a litter, but mm. she had lots of medical issues. Mm. Um, so we took her on, in that she suited the Cuddle Buddy gang that we operate, which is a gang of dogs that go into residential nursing homes and oh. schools. And cuddle people. Yeah. What but a like lovely that, awful nice dog. Nice. <laughs> so so they, yeah. they became inseparable straight away? No. Or? Their initial um, relationship was very poor, you would describe, um, in that uh, Pugly was two, um, and Pugly was much loved in the family, much adored, and along came Nelly, the baby pug, um, so Nelly would grab hold of Pugly, she would hurt her. Um, but because pugs, by their very nature, they are so tolerable, they are so beautiful natured, she just accepted it. Mm. And gradually their love... Well, you always well, pull the tail off you love. You do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pugly's just uh, leant down there and given uh, Nelly a, a, a little a lick, lick on her on yeah. a, a forehead. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's all, that's all great. You know, dogs get on very well together. Mm. But, but what, what is it... Because I know that you don't necessarily like to label the animal kingdom with, you know, sort of human terms. Yeah. But you are involved in this entire subject. So, you, you know, you must have... What, what makes you think this is beyond dogs getting yeah. on? Yeah. I mean, I'm not a behaviourist, but we see, on average, 80 dogs a day in our facility. So we get to see what you consider, in dog terms, normal behaviour. Um, these exhibit an intensity in a relationship that you would regard as a bonding, as a, as a pairing. In, um, in what way does that manifest um, itself? When they there wake up in the morning, the first thing they do in the morning when they open their eyes is they greet each other. So they lick each other's faces, they lick each other's ears, um, yeah. they... They, cl they sleep together in close contact, so they have to have physical contact. Um, it's almost painful if they haven't. They yeah. have to be in close contact. But that's still two dogs getting on. Yeah. No, and then it <laughs> progresses, and then when things get very exciting during the day, um, that may overspill into some... Extra activities. What sort of extra activities? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you need to get to the nitty gritty. That's what they're yeah, asking I for. I can't yeah. show you the video now. No, that's yeah. okay. Oh my that's God, fine. You're videoing. <laughs> <laughs> Where is this going? <laughs> but it, but um, it's more one than the other, isn't it? So Pugly yeah, is quite is quite it's the driving and force. The driving yeah, force. Yeah, and definitely. Pugly tends to mount yes, Nelly, and not always on the right end. I would add, sometimes on the head. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so so. The intensity of the love. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so, but, but Nelly, you know, when she's in heat, was quite happy to go off and uh, and sort of see the guys. So yeah. Nelly could be bisexual. Yeah. Um, and uh, or, and 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 maybe to to her, a Pugly's just like a friend with benefits. Oh. <laughs> Don't say that. Don't ruin this. Oh. No, they have a love. They, they they do have a love. They. I <laughs> think they, they, yeah. the only thing that worries me about all of this mm. is that if we lost one. Oh yeah. I do think that they would, they would pine. One yeah. of them would pine. Sure, One sure of them would suffer. Yeah. You know, I know that's putting human up, sort of yes. feeling. No, but definitely, no doubt. They, um, they Scott, do love each other. The thing is with, with this is that yes. you you say just. To, I mean, we're all sort of you know, it's quite funny, but <laughs> yeah. actually, this is a real thing, and you totally believe that there are animals of that have same sex. One hundred percent. Tendencies. It's not about using human terms for animals. Homosexuality is two males or two females showing attention towards each yeah. other. And it has been reported across 1,500 different species in the natural world. Right. Uh, it is something that I've seen anecdotally in my practices. You have people coming in saying, I think the dog's gay. And I always turn around and go, well, who really cares? If they're having a lovely time, good on them. It doesn't really matter. But it is natural behaviour that they're exhibiting it and certainly something we see in 
companion animals and in dogs. Does become something of a financial issue if if it's mm. a ram. Yes. And and yes. and it turns out that the the ram is possibly gay. Yes, but I think farmers also appreciate that uh, uh, homosexual behaviour is something that they can rely on and count on. And actually, the percentages across species is relatively similar. Um, about eight percent of rams are thought to be gay. Mm. Uh, generally, uh, it's accepted that maybe about 10% of people are gay, uh, and animals as well. You know, there's a sort of a general roundabout ruling. So this thing is occurring over and over again in complex mammals mm. in the natural world. So if you go, okay, the farmer realises that you know, eight to ten percent of his rams are gay. Well. As long as they're having a lovely time and they're still able to yeah, propagate that, the species... I, I'm then... sure that's not the way they're thinking. They're, they're, they're looking at that ram, which should be going out and doing the job, yeah, um, yes. and in actual well, fact they're isn't, because they're, they're, I think in the documentary there's footage of uh, of all the ewes in one pen and the ram is trying to get to the other rams in the other pen. You know, and that, yes. that, you know which, as you say, is lovely and that's fantastic and, yes. and all great, but not if there's, you know, the, no. if, if it's an issue, a financial issue to the farmer. 100%. It doesn't, if it doesn't work in that situation because it is a production animal and so therefore they just would appreciate that that behaviour was occurring and choose a ram that was more uh, interested in the ladies. There is an incredible story about two flamingos. It's there? literally my favourite story ever. So go on, just explain right. it. So uh, Slimbridge Wildfowl um, Centre, it's up in Gloucestershire, and they have two gay flamingos. Mm -hmm. Now I love the names, Carlos and Fernando, yeah. amazing. Yeah. But beyond that, it's even better. So um, normally flamingos have um, pairings just for a season, not for a lifetime. But these boys have decided that they are a monogamous pairing. They stick together every single season. But beyond that, they want to be gay flamingo dads. So they are actively, every season, they can't make eggs of their own, so they go and borrow an egg from the ne nest beside, then they actually are bringing up their own chicks and, and then bring them up right to full term. It's amazing. And they're, it's amazing. they're still together now. They're and still they were first together. found in 2005, first discovered in yes. 2005, I think it was, and they are still together, even as yep. you say, you know, uh, not in, a, in, a, in the usual relationship in the flamingo world, um, it would be a season by season, yes. more or less. Um, yes. but, but this is a 14-year relationship. Yes, this is, this is for life. Um, and what I love about this is it just really does say that this is a natural behaviour. Mm. It is not a case of nurture, it is nature. Mm. You can't Absolutely. learn or be taught to be gay. You are or you aren't what you are, and we should all just celebrate it. It's amazing. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's in albatrosses, it's in penguins, yes, it's dolphins. been noted in bottlenose dolphins, yes. in, in uh, primates. And maybe the thing is, perhaps in the animal world, um, it, you know, obviously for millennia, this has been a perfectly normal thing mm -hmm. to to be part of the relationship pool. Maybe it's just humans that have suddenly begun to realise that this is actually okay. Absolutely. Well, I, I think that we should learn a lot from animals. That's my whole career is basically saying that we should be looking after animals and using them as a mirror to ourselves. And certainly, um, human nature, we are animals. We are part of the natural world. And if it's happening naturally with animals that we live, live beside or animals in, in the wider environment, then we should just go, you know, that's natural behaviour. It just adds to the colourful tapestry, mm. which is, you know, the animal kingdom, and we should all just celebrate it. Well, thank you both very much, and thank you for bringing them in. They are absolutely thank gorgeous. You. My Gay Dog and Other Animals is on Channel 4 tonight at 9pm. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. you.